Alright, time to do our light burn setup for our camera kit. Um, you can see our camera kit is installed um, right here. Um, this is looking down from my, my normal camera that I have in my enclosure. Um, you'll notice I put down a big old white sheet down here. Um, lighting does affect uh, how this works. Um, aside from lighting, what also impacts it is uh, a couple other things which will come across. Um, but if you have like a honeycomb or something like that uh, as a bed um, or a grid, um, cover it. Um, you know, something neutral, white, you can put some cardboard down or whatever, but no textures or anything like that because it will confuse light burn as it's trying to do its calibration. Um, that's why I put the big old white sheet on. Um, there's another reason uh, we'll get to when we do the alignment. Um, having a big old piece of paper there um, or a piece of cardboard is rather helpful. All right, so let's get to it. Um, so we'll switch over to Windows Camera. Um, this is actually from the kit, um, and I've used this to kind of set everything up um, already. So the first thing for you guys, remember we talked about the focus screw um, on the side of the camera? Um, that's the first thing we want to set. Um, so what I do is I go and I get myself some junk mail that has some kind of small writing, and then I loosen up the adjustment screw, adjust the focus to get as good a focus as I can on this, and then lock it back down. Um, pay attention when you do the locking back down because the size, um, or sorry, the screw as it goes back in can nudge the focus off. Um, so yeah, just balance it out, get it as good as you can. Um, you're probably not going to get the itty bitty teeny tiny writing in focus, but if you really want to mess with it, knock yourself out. Alright, so once that's done, we go ahead and take it, our little sheet out. Um, now we can do things like, all right, are we you know, side to side? Are we pretty much square? Yeah, I mean, if you're not, you can sl uh, loosen up the bracket and slide the camera kit side to side. Um, front to back, you'll notice I can't see the, the, the X gantry back here or the front rail up here. That's okay. Um, the reason that it is okay is because you're not able to really engrave in those areas anyhow. Um, so what I do to check things out is I will stick a piece of material that inside like on this back rail here and see I can see the very bottom of that that's actually the end of your engraving well that's the end of the bed at this point if the laser module is there it is slamming into the front frame um, kind of the same with your front um, it can't go any farther back um, so normally, you know, I home the machine, uh, which means to put it in that back left corner as far as it go, and that kind of lines everything up. If you want to try to change out, like, your brightness a little bit to kind of do some compensation, you know, feel free to do that here. Um, it will carry over into light burn um, and sit there. So that's it. Um, if there's any other adjustments you want to make, then you can do that now. If you want things to be more center or whatnot, feel free to loosen up the, the boom arm, move it out a little bit, move it in, make yourself happy. Um, there you go. Once we're done, we do need to close out camera um, so that camera and light burn don't fight with each other. And I can go overhead and I can switch back over to our camera kit. So we've got our same view there. Um, see how I play with the lighting, uh, sorry, the brightness, and it changed over here. Same thing. All right, so first things first, we need to do the camera lens calibration. So we select our guy here. Um, what I find is, you know, saying it's a standard camera, it tends to work a little bit better. Um, fool around with it, things aren't working, you know, whatever floats your goat. I'm going to say next. Um, so what you need to do is you need to click on this to download the circle pattern image. Now, it's very important, they didn't actually put it in here, uh, but in their, their normal setup video, they do mention it that, you know, it needs to be, you know, actual size. Um, what tends to happen is people will go and print it, and it'll be full size, and that will kind of, um, you know, cover a whole standard sheet of paper. And that's not what Lightburn is looking for. You see the proportion here to their whole bed area. Um, we're kind of trying to get the same thing. And to give you an idea how it can throw things off. So for my overhead camera, um, it needs it, you know, it's a lot farther away. So 
this is what it likes. But if I say capture, it can't find the pattern. It's way too big. Um, move this out. You know, here's a, a slightly smaller one. This is four by six. Capture, not so happy. So, getting the size right is important. This is a three and a half by five. And there we go, now it's capturing images. So remember, if you're having trouble, check the size of your printout, uh, it's really important. Uh, normally, I will put this on a piece of glass or something to keep it flat, because we do want it to be as flat as we possibly can. Um, for this instructional video or the setup video, we're just going to kind of do it close. So we just kind of get it as close to um, the representation up here as we possibly can. What we're going to look for when we do a capture is we want a score of 0.3 or less. Um, the closer to zero you get, the better. Um, feel free to kind of move things around, change your lighting, whatever you need to do um, to get within there. Um, you know, and you can always come back to this again later. Don't worry about what's here on this side. Um, this is Lightburn starting to calculate out um, what everything looks like and any distortions in your camera's lens. Um, this is the real deal over here. That's actually the view from your camera. Um, as you've noticed, I stick my hand in and I pull my hand out. There is a delay. So make sure your hand's out of the video over here before you click capture. So let's get started. All right, we're gonna go ahead. Do all right, point two three, that's reasonable. We click next. We move our little image here. Tell it to capture. Yeah, I think we can do better than that. Let's try moving it up a bit. Mm -hmm. Again, we want to try and get as low a score as we possibly can. Again, it doesn't have to be exact, you know, according to our picture, but close, the closer, the better. This is the stages where you can start messing with things like lighting or that sort of stuff. <coughs> mm -hmm. We can do a little bit better. I think for the moment, we'll probably end up leaving it there. We'll move a little bit more and see how it goes. Okay. Next one is over to the other side. happier with that. Let's see, do we do some adjustment on the lights? Hmm, kind of. So, this, this is the whole process, and this is the fun of trying to calibrate a camera in Lightburn. You kind of move things around, and see what makes the most sense, what it can actually pick up. And where it's attempting to look for things. And the flatter on this, the better. I think for now we'll leave it because I want to keep getting your video, but you get the idea. Um, again, change up whatever you need to do to try and get a good score. Um, even here, um, you can get a, anything less, a point light through your battery, or less is better than that. Alright, so now we're going to move over to our other side.
Okay, next. Oop, that's a little too far, eh? Let's bring it back in. Okay. piece on is not in a good spot. Okay. Go back over to this side. See, it doesn't actually even know I put it in the wrong corner. Um, does it actually care? Not really. Um, what it's trying to do is do a compensation on the lens itself. So it's just looking for all the little patterns. But we're going to redo it anyway, so we're kind of doing it right. There we go. What's next? Now let's stick it over in this corner. All right, so that portion is done. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the camera alignment. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna take all the calculations that Lightburn did and turn them into where that is in your bed. So you got, got the correct camera. Um, this is all pretty much exactly uh, right. Um, 3,000 millimeters per second, 60% power, 100 scale. I tend to actually turn this up a bit um, to about 140. The bigger, the better. Um, it is a rec well, it's actually a square shape, but um, you can go ahead and you can frame that uh, to make sure it'll fit. Um, it, now you know why the, the piece of paper is down there um, to kind of show where everything works. Well, so we can actually do our alignment piece on this. So right now, I have it running through and just doing a quick framing to make sure that it's actually going to be on my piece of paper. <coughs> that takes a second because I have it framing rather slowly um, on purpose. So what's going to happen is when we tell it to go, it's going to go and it's going to put this pattern on your piece of paper. Um, or whatever you happen to have stuck in there to do it. So make sure you focused you know, your laser, um, that way it's where it's supposed to be. Um, from there, we're going to go and we're going to identify where the centers of each of these circles are. And you make any adjustments that it needs to. The camera, you know, if you have it turned sideways, uh, because you think that looks better, or something along those lines, no problem. It will automatically reconfigure things uh, whichever way you like. All right, so it's ready on my end, so and everything lined up the way it was supposed to. So click start, and it's going to go do its business. So we're going to wait for that to finish up. All right. Just about done. I confess, I hit pause on the recording for a minute or two um, while it does its thing. But we are just about right there. We go now. My it's finished on my end. Next, so you can see where it's burned things. Um, you can also you know, jog the laser around if we needed to move it out of the way. Um, we hit capture image, and there's our picture of what it got. So we say next. So we need to do this in order. Uh, this is what actually sets everything up. So we need to zoom in, and we want to double click and, uh, on the dead center, or as close as we can get, to 
to where these lines get together. Um, the better you do here, the, the, the better overall. Um, don't stress out. You, know, you can get multiple choices uh, or multiple times to do it. So you pretty much just zoom in here. If you don't like it, double click it again. Kind of move it around a bit. Once you're happy, zoom back out. And yes, you do need to, to do them in order. Can you tell I'm not a fan of light burns way of doing this? So this one's a little fuzzy, but that's okay. You get pretty darn close. And then last but not least, number four. Okay, I think that's good. Next. Hey, we're all done. Awesome. So if we say update or overlay, bam, that's what we see. So the calibration, because it was trying to figure everything out. Oh, actually, here, I need to reset this. Zero and zero. We'll talk about those in, in a bit. Um, the other bit we're going to try and do is figure out all the, the rest of these things. Um, because of the way we do our calibration, that's why we're missing some of our sections up here and down here. Those are areas you can't really do anything in anyway. So it's really up to you if you want to play with it. These controls over here, um, they are if you don't want to show the camera at all. Or to fade the image out so you can see the grid more easily. Um, whichever you know, makes the most sense to you. So what I tend to do is, okay, the alignment's great and all that, but I, what I tend to do is I will go make a box of, you know, whatever size. Um, copy that. And I will put it somewhere over here in the same section. Copy it, and I'll put another one over here. Another one over here. Another one over here. everybody I'm gonna go to my cuts yeah 3061 pass yeah good um, you can do a fill or you can do a line whichever makes you know makes you feel good line obviously is faster and then I tell it to go do its job so what I want to do is I want to do some fine tuning you know, is it actually hitting where it's supposed to be um, you know, it thinks it is but we can do some fine tuning and make sure that it actually is. You can even watch as the D1 does its business. All right, the D1 is now parked. So we update our overlay and now we can go zoom in and see. Oh, look at that. Look how close, you see? Can you see the, the dotted line and where it actually got, um, made the square? That looks really good. I don't really need to adjust that. Let's look over here. Uh, we moved a little bit. That is... Let's see, how much of a shift is that? That is 0.2 millimeters, which is really good. Um, Especially given that you can't home accurately. Um, yep, we look good down here. And yeah, we're looking good, re really good right there. So we don't need to do any adjustments, which is great. If we need to do this, um, you do make adjustments. You can do an X shift and a Y shift. Um, you know, it jumps in certain amounts so you can fine tune it there and when you're done you click your setting save settings and it'll hold it over for your next time now personally what I do is anytime I'm going to start a new job um, I will run something like this um, that way I can make sure that everything is in order the other thing to be aware of is that material height will change things around significantly um, the taller the material, the more off this is going to be. How do you fix that? 
Um, well, you rerun the alignment test that we did, which is tools, do, 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 do calibrate camera alignment, um, and that will fix what you see. Um, that, or you can sit there and kind of guess it out, um, whichever you want. So the other nice thing is, since we know how good this is, um, if we right click here, we say export the camera data. We can now save all of its calibration stuff into a file um, and pull it back later on. So if you want to try out different cameras or you know, do anything else, or you want to, you know, let's say you want to go back and do a, another calibration round to try and get the, this stuff a bit more visible, hey, no problem. Go ahead, you can save your current settings, go back, try a recalibration. If you didn't like that one, you can you can flip back by right clicking and say import camera settings. And there you go. All right, folks, that is it. Hopefully you enjoy your kit. If you've got any questions, feel free to reach out. Take care.